Today we are going to learn about series circuits and Kirchhoff's voltage law. Previously we learned that electricity is a fluid, like air, and that voltage is like air pressure. And we can make electricity move through a conductor much like blowing air through a soda straw. And if we place a restriction in that flow with a resistor, not only do we get less fluid flow, or less current, but we get a pressure difference from one side of that resistor to the other. Today we are going to look at Kirchhoff's voltage law, which tells us how voltage is distributed in a series circuit. A series circuit, by definition, has only one current path. Here is a series circuit. We have a 60 volt battery, a 5 ohm resistor, a 10 ohm resistor, and a 15 ohm resistor, laid out end to end in such a way that there is only one possible path for our electrical current to flow. In this particular circuit, we will have two amps of current, and no matter where we put our amp meter, we will see two amps. If we put it here, we see two amps. If we put it here, two amps, two amps, two amps. No matter where we put the current meter, we see two amps. So the current is the same everywhere. This is like a car race or a horse race. Let's take the Indianapolis 500 for example. It is raced on a two and a half mile track with four turns and four straights. 33 cars start the race, and so let's go to turn one and count the cars. So we go to turn one and we count the cars, we see 33 cars. Let's go to turn two and count the cars. We see 33 cars. Is that 66 cars? No, it was the same 33 cars. So no matter where we go around the track, we see the same 33 cars no matter where we go. So in a series circuit, when we see two amps, or two amps, or two amps, wherever we are, it's the same two amps no matter where we are in the circuit. Remember, an amp is a certain number of electrons per second, just like the race has 33 cars, we have so many electrons per second going around that circuit. So in a series circuit, we have one current path, and the current is the same everywhere. The voltage in a series circuit is distributed according to Kirchhoff's voltage law, and the voltage will be different in different places in the circuit. The exception is, if we have equal resistors, then we'll have equal voltages. But the voltage will be proportional to the resistance. So if the resistance is different, the voltage will be different. So one current path, the current is the same everywhere, and unless our resistors are equal everywhere, our voltage will be different in different parts of the circuit. Recall that when we put voltage sources end to end in series, that those voltages add together. The same thing happens with the resistance in a series circuit. The resistors add together for a total resistance. So we have 5 ohms plus 10 ohms plus 15 ohms. The total resistance of this circuit is the sum of those resistors, which would be 30 ohms. Kirchhoff's voltage law is every bit as important as Ohm's law in understanding electronic circuits. You must have a solid grasp of Kirchhoff's voltage law to analyze electronics. Kirchhoff's voltage law states that the voltages in a series circuit add up to zero. Now that's not very useful. Let's put it in more useful terms. Here we have a 60 volt battery. So the total voltage available in this circuit is 60 volts. We have these three resistors. We know that when there is current flowing through a resistor, that there will be a voltage difference from one side of that resistor to the other. And that's the voltages we want to look at here. So there's going to be so much voltage across this 5 ohm resistor, so much across the 10 ohm resistor, and so much across the 15 ohm resistor. And those three voltages must add up to the battery voltage. So we'll have so much voltage here, so much voltage here, and so much voltage here, and those three voltages will add up to 60. So another way to look at Kirchhoff's voltage law is the voltages across the resistors in a series circuit will add up to the battery voltage. So let's get started and see how this applies. I have my voltmeter here. We put it across the battery, and of course we see 60 volts. Now we put it across this 5 ohm resistor, and what do we see? We see 10 volts. We put it across this 10 ohm resistor, and we see 20 volts. Now we put it across the 15 ohm resistor, and we see 30 volts. 30 plus 20 plus 10 equals 60. So there we see Kirchhoff's voltage law being manifested in this circuit. Notice the polarities of the voltages. Here we have the 60 volt battery, and here's the positive, and here's the negative. Remember, when you have a voltage source, 
the positive voltage is where the conventional current exits the source. But now we have current flowing into a resistor and we get a backup of voltage behind the resistor so we get the positive voltage where the current enters the resistance. So positive voltage where the current exits a voltage source, positive voltage where it enters a current consumer. So notice that the polarities of the voltages across the resistors is reversed compared to the polarity of the battery. So what we have is positive 60 volts here, negative 10 volts, negative 20 volts, negative 30 volts. Add those all together and what do we get? Zero. There's Kirchhoff's voltage law stated in the classical way. But it's much more useful to remember that the voltages across your resistors in a series circuit must add up to your battery voltage or your power supply voltage or whatever you are using to supply voltage to the circuit. Now let's look at Kirchhoff's voltage law from a different perspective. Let's take the black lead of our voltmeter and anchor it here and call that zero volts. Now we will use the red lead and measure the voltages around the circuit, seeing all positive voltages. So if we put the red lead here, what do we have? We have the red lead on the positive terminal of the battery, the black lead on the negative, using conventional current. Positive is greater than negative, so this is the higher voltage, that's the lower voltage. Red lead here, black lead there. We get a positive reading on the voltmeter, we will see positive 60 volts. Now let's move the red lead over to here. Now we've gone across the 5 ohm resistor and we already determined that there is 10 volts positive to negative here. So higher voltage, lower voltage. So we lose 10 volts from one side of that resistor to the other. So by the time we get here, we are down to 50 volts. So our meter will read positive 50 volts. Now let's move our red lead down to here. Now we've moved across the 10 ohm resistor, which has 20 volts across it. Positive here, negative here, so higher voltage, lower voltage. So we started with 50 here, we lose 20, and now we're down to 30 volts. There's two ways to look at what happens between here and here. We have positive 30 volts, we lose 30 volts, leaving us with zero volts. Or we have the red lead at the same place as the black lead, what does the meter tell us? It tells us the difference in voltage between the two leads. The two leads are at the same place, so it tells us zero volts. So we started with 30 volts, we lose 30, we're down to zero, so we're out of voltage, we now have an absence of voltage, right? No, of course not. We already determined that zero volts is not the absence of voltage. All it tells us is that the black lead and the red lead are at the same place. This is 60 volts lower than here. This acts like a suction, sucking in the electricity, and then electricity is blown out the top to recirculate through the circuit. Of course, it's not the same electricity, but for all intents and purposes, it looks the same, so it might as well be. So looking at the circuit this way, we see we started out with 60 volts, we lost 10, we lost 20, then we lost 30, getting down to zero volts. So our 60 volts was consumed as we go around the circuit. The total voltage lost going around the circuit equal the battery voltage, Kirchhoff's voltage law is satisfied. So this zero volts is not the absence of voltage, it's just the lowest reading we get. We still have voltage moving the electricity around the circuit. It's just that our voltmeter tells us zero because we have our black lead and the red lead at the same place. Let's take another look at how the voltage is distributed around the circuit. This 15 ohm resistor is half of our total resistance and it has half of our voltage. So we have 30 volts across the 15 ohm resistor. This 10 ohm resistor is one third of our total resistance and we have one third of our total voltage, 20 volts across the 10 ohm resistor. The 5 ohm resistor is one sixth of our total resistance and we have one sixth of our total voltage across it or 10 volts. Now let's double these resistances and see what happens. Now we have 10 ohms, 20 ohms, and 30 ohms. Let's look at the voltages across there. We still have 60 volts, 50 volts, 30 volts, 0 volts. The voltage didn't change. But look at the resistors. We still have half of our resistance, one third of our resistance, one sixth of our resistance. So the ratio of resistances didn't change and the ratio of voltages didn't change. So the voltage is proportional to the resistance. As long as the resistances stay proportional, the voltages will stay proportional. 
What happened? Let's put a current meter in and see what happened. Ah, there we go. Now we're down to one amp of current. So we doubled the resistance. Our resistance went down by half. But our voltages stayed the same. So as long as the resistors stay the same proportions, our voltages will stay the same proportions. So I can increase these to 5,000 ohms, 10,000 ohms, 15,000 ohms, and the voltages will still be 60 volts, 50 volts, 30 volts, zero. So as long as the proportions stay the same, the voltages will stay the same. Look what I've done now. I took the 10 ohm resistor and the 5 ohm resistor and made them a single 15 ohm resistor. So I now have two 15 ohm resistors. So I have a total of 30 ohms. You add them together, you get the total resistance. Still have 60 volts, so I still have two amps of current flowing in the circuit. If I have two amps going through a 15 ohm resistor here, I'm going to get 30 volts across it. Ohm's law. If I have two amps flowing through a 15 ohm resistor here, I will also get 30 volts across it. Ohm's law. So if the resistors are the same, the voltage is the same. That complicates the rule that the voltages will be different in a series circuit, but that's part of the complication. If the resistors are the same, the voltage will be the same. But the voltage will be proportional to the resistance. Here, the resistors are the same, so the voltage is the same. So I lose 15 volts here, I lose 15 volts here. So if I go around the circuit, I have 60 volts, 30 volts, down to 0 volts. So what do I have between these two resistors? Half of my voltage. So if I have two equal resistors, I will have half of my voltage in between them. Now let's go back to our original circuit, except I'm going to break the circuit right here. There's no connection from this resistor back to the battery. Let's measure the voltages and see what we get. I put my red lead here and I see 60 volts, just like I expect. If we move our meter to here, we expect to see 50 volts. But what do we see? Remember, to have the voltage across this resistor, we must have current plus resistance. There is no current flowing in the circuit because there's a break in the circuit. There's no way for the electrical current to flow. So there's no current flow. There can be no voltage difference. Therefore, I have 60 volts and no difference. I still have 60 volts. I go across the 10 ohm resistor. I still have no current. Therefore, I can have no difference. So I still have 60 volts. I move to the other side of this resistor. I still have 60 volts. So with no current flowing, I have the same voltage everywhere in the circuit. Let's look at what's going on here in another way. Remember when we had a complete circuit that our voltage was proportional to our resistance. I had 20 volts across the 10 ohm resistor and 10 volts across the 5 ohm resistor. So double the resistance, I had double the voltage. Now what we have going on here is an infinite resistance. Therefore I have all of my voltage across that gap. But just to simplify things, remember when there's no current in the circuit the voltage is the same everywhere in the circuit. We can actually use this as a troubleshooting tool. Let's say I see 60 volts here, 60 volts here, and 0 volts here. Well, it looks like I have all the voltage across that resistor. That looks like I have an infinite resistance there. I must have a burned out resistor here. So looking at the voltages, 60 volts, 60 volts, 0 volts, 0 volts, that told me that I must have an open resistor here. I replace that resistor and things should be working again with once again, 10 volts, 20 volts, and 30 volts to make the entire 60 volts around the circuit. Let's look at another scenario. Let's change this battery to 180 volts. Let's put a 45 ohm resistor here, a 30 ohm resistor here, and a 15 ohm resistor here. What is our total resistance? We add them up, so we have a total of 90 ohms. What is our current flowing through the circuit? If you know your voltage, you divide into it, so we take 180 volts, Divide that by 90 ohms, and that gives us a current of 2 amps. And that current is everywhere in the circuit. How is the voltage distributed in the circuit? Let's start with the lower resistor. We have 15 ohms and 2 amps. We don't know our voltage, so we multiply. 15 times 2 gives us 30 volts. Now let's do the same thing here at the 30 ohm resistor. Only let's not. We have 15 ohms here, 30 ohms here. We must have twice the voltage. So if we have 30 volts here, we must have 60 volts here. So what's the voltage across this resistor? The three voltages must add up to 180 volts. We have a total of 90 volts across these two resistors, so we must have 90 volts left here. Let's look at that another way. We have 15 ohms and 30 volts here. 
this resistor is three times that resistor, so it must have three times the voltage. 15 ohms and 30 volts, therefore 45 ohms must have 90 volts. Let's confirm it with Ohm's law. We need to know the voltage, so we multiply. So that's 45 ohms times 2 amps equals 90 volts. So we have 90 volts, 60 volts, 30 volts, and they add up to 180 volts. What have we learned? We learned that by definition, a series circuit has one current path. There's only one possible path for the current to flow in a series circuit. The current is the same everywhere in a series circuit. No matter where I measure it, I'm going to measure the same current. And it's like a horse race. If you have 10 horses in a race, no matter where you count them, they're the same 10 horses. The voltage is going to be different in different parts of the circuit, but it will be proportional to the resistance. So if I have twice the resistance from one resistor to another, I will have twice the voltage. But those voltages must all add up to my battery voltage, which satisfies Kirchhoff's current law. And the total resistance is the sum of all the resistors in the circuit. Understanding series circuits and Kirchhoff's voltage law is essential to examining electronic circuits. So be sure to watch the video on series circuit exercises and practice the scenarios so that you have a thorough understanding of these circuits. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible and a big thank you to everyone for watching.